Reason Podcast. I am one of your fantastic hosts, Mark. And I'm the other host, Raven. And Mark has beef with me because I sent him a silly goose text. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, do I got a (laughs) bone to pick with you. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and get into that. So, dear listener, uh, I texted Raven... um, Oh, what? Oh, hold on a second. I got to go back through the, I got to go back through oh, the files here. Oh, you were telling me that we had to record on a different date because you had family stuff. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what it was. So, um, yeah, and, and Raven replied back, uh, hey, we won't be coming down on Thanksgiving weekend because the folks ain't going to be there. And I was like, oh, why aren't our folks going to be there? Because I thought for sure they were going to, and I don't even know if that part's real or not anymore because Raven is a lying liar who lies. Um, And (laughs) (laughs) uh, I was like, Oh, I didn't know they were going to be going out of town. And Raven replied back. Oh yeah. Chris called them and dad told Chris to just F off. And I was like, what, what in the world did they talk about? And I figured that if it would have been that bad, my dad, our dad, would have called us or called me and been like, y'all let me tell you what your damn brother did or something. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I decided to go straight to the source and I messaged Chris and was like, Chris, man, hey, dude, is everything all right? Uh, I heard that you and dad got into a fight, man. What's going on? And it took him about five minutes. He was like, no, nah, Raven was just joking. Chris and it literally this- like shows me the text from you, and he was like Raven, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Hey man, sorry." And what's so wild is I think at this point, as I'm waiting on the response from Chris, was I think I told Kelly was like, "Hey, I think Chris and my dad got into a fight. I don't know what's going on yet." <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah. No. So. Uh, like I had been telling Chris to let your dad know, like, Hey, we should come down for Thanksgiving. And I guess he waited way too long because he was like, Oh, it's three weeks away. Now we gotta, we gotta talk to dad. And so your dad was like, nah, we're going out of town that weekend. But then continued to be like, now, when were you wanting to come down the weekend before? No, dad, the weekend of Thanksgiving, we come down black Friday. And then he, they would start talking, and then your dad would be like, "Are you sh- what? What weekend was? Are you sure?" And it was just like, "Why would we come down the weekend before Thanksgiving to celebrate Thanksgiving with you guys?" <laughs> it was a whole thing, uh, and your dad just kind of said a bunch of stuff, and Chris was like, "Oh my God, somebody needs to help this man." <laughs> well, see, I was I was told. A couple of weeks ago, that that the weekend after Thanksgiving was the the big country cousins Thanksgiving get together. So I don't know if they mean Thanksgiving weekend or if they mean the weekend after Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe I so, just need to. We'll 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 figure something out. We'll talk yeah. to a vet or something. But yeah, so I was like, all right, whatever. I, w- I thought it was weird that your family wouldn't just be there because I was like, okay, what what family y'all going to see? <laughs> they all right by y'all. Anywho. Well, so how's your week been, Raven, besides lying to me? Oh, you know, just lying to everyone else. That's yeah. all I do. <laughs> I didn't have... Like, hardly any trick-or-treaters this week, and I was sad. Really? Yeah. I think we only had, like, I know I saw one kid, like, come over and grab some candy, because I just left the bowl out so that kids wouldn't keep coming up and ringing the doorbell, so I kind of, like, roped it off right at the front of our sidewalk with a bunch of, like, Halloween lights and stuff. And at some point, I went out there, and I was like, I guess just check and... See if we got uh, any candy left in the bowl. I got another bag. I can refill it. No, there was still quite a bit of candy. So, Hmm. yeah. Uh, A lot of, like, places down here 
like churches and even some schools do like trunk or treats and stuff like that. Or they'll hit up like the super big fancy rich neighborhoods and stuff like that. But yeah, because even like some of the people that were in the area that I know and then even some of our friends back home, they didn't get any anyone coming to their doors. And I was like, man, it's not like how it used to be where kids would just hit up every house and neighborhood they could get their hands on. Do you guys have any good trick or treaters? Uh, well, we didn't really, we didn't really uh, pass out stuff at the house because, uh, you know, I was gone with Amy to a different neighborhood because we go and hang out with our friends, and um, we live in a cul-de-sac, and no one wants to come down our road because no one really passes out candy anyway. And every year we're like, oh, we should totally set up something at the end of the street, we, you know, where the, where everyone comes in and and really do it up big. We never do, um, which is surprising because it's like really hit or miss in our neighborhood. But the neighborhood we go to, my buddy's neighborhood, they usually have a bunch of kids. This year they didn't really have a bunch of kids. Like I want to say right before COVID hit, there were there were tons of kids. Yeah. I mean, it looked like it looked like a John Hughes movie. So many kids. Um, and, you know, obviously COVID and it's kind of dwindled a lot since then. But, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just different. It is different because I remember like trick or treating and there was always like a bunch of kids out, stuff like that. I would go. For a good bit in, like, middle school, I would go to my best friend's house and we would go through her neighborhood. That was always super fun. But it's just a little different because it's, like, now churches and, like, other places will do, like, the trunk or treats or throw little parties for kids and stuff so they can just, like, do whatever. (sighs) Sad, sad. Yeah. Well, uh, the big highlight of the day, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more when, when we get to the, the end of the show and talk about the things that made us happy, um, was we got to dress up at work. And oh, yeah. that was super fun because I've wanted to do it for years. And um, like the first year I was in there and I was like, oh, y'all actually dress up. This is something that I should do next year, but I don't know what to do. And then the next year came around and I was like, I don't know what to do. And then when the pandemic hit and I got into 3d printing as like my pandemic hobby, yeah. um, you know, and I started making stuff, um, last year, I don't even think we were in the office on Halloween. I'm not real sure. A hundred percent sure. But everyone was just coming back into the office. So we weren't really doing anything. Mm-hmm. And this year we were like, we're decorating the cube. We're, you know, we're going to do it big. So sure enough, I came in and I had my Mandalorian helmet in a, in a suit and I, I liked to get up. I thought it looked pretty snazzy, pretty fresh. Um, and it was, it really was a fun day so much so that when de- Wednesday felt like it was 17 hours long, uh, Dang. <laughs> we, we kind of came to a consensus of like, we need to do a literal something fun in the office every month because we really had a lot of fun, even though we didn't really like do anything big or bad or, you know, like, yeah, really let the, it was just like a nice kind of just blowing off steam thing. And it was fun. Nice. That sounds like a really good time. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, let's talk about some stuff that's come across the news feed. You've, you've stumbled across some, fantastic news stories this week raven i'm gonna let you kind of take the wheel on this because you are you are on fire with the uh with the news stories this week well i sent you that tweet the other day that said disney is buying hulu for 8.6 billion dollars my lord how much money? 
That's insane. Is, uh, Hulu, is Hulu worth $8.6 billion? Hulu does make some banger shows, to be honest. Like, I feel like some of their shows don't have nearly as many seasons as you would probably want. Or at least the shows that I watch, because I watch weird stuff sometimes. Um, but the shows that they make are honestly pretty good. I prefer Hulu over Netflix, to be honest. I'll say this about Hulu and the with their live package with their live package, the the on demand options you have to stream like past TV shows and um, other stuff with ads is unparalleled. You can watch entire seasons of like 20 seasons worth of shows on demand and it is fantastic now i don't know what it's like without the live get up i know they still have a huge catalog of tv but yeah the fact that i can go and watch literally 20 seasons of csi and i just have to deal with like maybe five or ten minutes worth of commercials per episode is yeah. fantastic but i don't oh, yeah. want to pay that 80 dollars a month to for live tv that i don't get so <laughs> you know yeah I mean, there are a few, like, things about Hulu that it's like, they could do some things a little differently. But, I mean, if Disney's buying them out, maybe they'll change some things over. Maybe. And that kind of begs the question of how are they going to decide what now is going to be on Disney Plus versus Hulu? True. Because Disney is already is already kind of like the majority stakeholder in Hulu. Originally, it was all the four networks, big networks come together, and they all have an equal say, and this is the spot where they kind of say, okay, here's where we'll, we will dump our TV shows, you know, to watch and whatever. And once Disney bought Fox, that gave them, like, the majority share in this kind of thing. So... Now they had Fox and FX and ABC and ESPN and all these other channels that fall under the under that Disney and Fox umbrella. And I honestly think that that was part of the reason that, you know, we now have Peacock and Paramount Plus as a place for the other shows that are the CBS shows and the NBC shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just kind of curious to see where this goes in the kind of um, the landscape of now Disney has Disney Plus and Hulu. Do we really need both of them? They kind of do like a package deal. Um, I don't remember what the whole package thing is, but it's like you can buy Hulu, Disney Plus and then like ESPN for like so much yeah and so honestly it's probably not that bad i also feel like there are so many streaming services nowadays it's kind of crazy there it's is like i don't want to pay for cable i'm not gonna lie i i couldn't care any less most of the shows that are already like streaming on tv like regular cable like they'll just be the next day on hulu of whatever i want to watch so right and we'll honestly, for years, up until two months ago, um, we we had a live TV service through Hulu or YouTube TV or whatever, and it we never watched it. Oh, we, yeah. we ne unless it was sports, specifically football, because I want I remember earlier this year after the Super Bowl. We were like, okay, we'll try Paramount Plus. And we tried Paramount Plus um, for – we disliked Paramount Plus so much that we didn't even get out of the free trial period before we were like, nope. Oh, goodness. Nope, go ahead and just cash this one out. This ain't worth – this ain't working. Um, and I remember I was so frustrated because I was like, well, where's this show? Where's this show? Like, I wanted certain things. I think CSI was one of them. And I was like, you're the CBS channel. You should have more CSI than like two, the, two seasons of CSI Miami. Once, you know, the first 
one first and like fourth season. It was really weird. The first and fourth season of the original CSI. I'm like, I don't want, no, give me all of it. You should have all of it. What's going on? It was just really weird and disjointed. Um, yeah, uh, weird. So, and then whenever we tried to watch, uh, I would get so frustrated at Kelly when she would put a movie on in the background and we would all end up watching it. And nowadays in commercials, like they just put them in wherever you could literally be in the middle of a scene, two people talking and they cut and go to commercial. And I'm like, uh. and I'm like, this is 15 minutes worth of commercial. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we like? I, I have fast and furious on digital. I could throw it on the Plex right now and we can just watch this movie and be done with it. I was, oh, I would get so frustrated. So. Big I oof. Know. Big oof. Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. But, yeah, I don't blame you for being like, I'm going to leave that behind. It's not important in life, you know? True. True. So, a few months back, I know I mentioned a lovely new Studio Ghibli movie, The Boy and the Heron, by our Oh, so lovely, uh, Miyazaki. They have finally just come out with the cast for the English version. And I sent you the cast, and there's some good people in here. Yes. There's some really good ones. Have you seen the trailer with the English voice cast? Yes, because I think I sent it to you. Was that you who sent it to me? Yes, because I saw where Mr. Robert Pattinson was in it. And he does a crazy voice in there for the Heron. Yes, and And honestly, I thought it was Mark Hamill. Because I thought Mark Hamill did like four voices in the trailer. (laughs) And I was like, I don't know which one Robert Pattinson is. Because he can't be the boy, because the boy's too high pitched for Robert Pattinson. Mm -hmm. It can't be the Heron, because that's either Willem Dafoe or um, Mark Hamill. And turned out it was Robert Pattinson. I was like, oh man, he might, Robert Pattinson might, might low key be a good voice actor. Like, like just slowly, but surely transition out of live acting and then just do animated stuff for the rest of his career and be killer at it. Yeah. I'm pretty excited for it. So we've got the very classic Christian Bale as I think the main person. We do have, like you said, William Defoe. We got Mark Hamill. We got Florence Poe. How do you say? How do you say I th- her? Last I, name? I think it's Pew. Pew. I think so. Okay. I'm not super familiar with a few of the names on here. I might know them if I like saw them. Uh, let's see. So Willem Willem Defoe, probably most famous. To... No, I know who Willem Dafoe is. Okay, fine. Uh, the, let's... the names that I didn't say. There's All like right. three. Who? Uh, Jimma Chan? Yeah. Let's see. I want to say she was in... What was she in? Where do I know her from? Uh, Crazy Rich Asian, The Eternals. Oh, yeah, she was in The Eternals. She was the main, the, the lead in The Eternals. Um. Uh, let's see what else is she in. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, know. I, no, the Dave Batista. I think that's how oh, you say his name. Yeah, he's from Gardens, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Yes. He, okay. Yeah, he's a wrestler. Oh yeah, he was also in Knock in the Cabin, or Knock at the Cabin, which was very good. I don't know if you saw that, but you should watch that. I have not. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Uh, and Karen. Let's see. I'm not going to say her last name because I'm going to mess it up. She was. Oh, she's she's from The Boys. She is. Um, oh, okay. She's in The Boys. She's in Bullet Train. She's in Suicide Squad. She's been in all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Okay. No, she's dope. Okay. Nice. Well, there. We've got a pretty good cast list of different people. I'm really excited to watch it. Yeah, and it it comes out a day after my birthday, so I'm probably going to go to the theater and watch it if I can. 
Ooh. Yup. I definitely want to go see this in theaters. I'm so excited. It gives like a lot of Howl's Moving Castle and Spirit Away type vibes, which I enjoy both of those quite a bit. So, maybe I'll see it opening day. That that That's would be that would be great if we could see it opening day and then come back the next day and record this show and be like, yo, just super hype on it. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know if Chris and I have talked to you about one of our favorite writers and directors, Mike Flanagan. Does that name ring a bell to you? Uh, I don't think so. So Mike Flanagan does some shows on Netflix that Chris and I love. And he is set to make a new movie soon. But I'm going to tell you some of the shows just in case you've seen them. I don't think you and I have ever talked about them. But The Haunting of Hill House, most recently he put out... um, Fall of the House of Usher, Midnight Mass, The Haunting of Bly Manor. He also directed Doctor Sleep. Uh, he's been in quite a bit of like different little horror things, but Chris and I really love his shows, and okay. they have just been like they're super good. They're so well directed, but they also like have a good horror element where. A lot of times you'll have to watch the show multiple times to catch little glimpses of like things that go on in the background. And it's once you like pay attention to it, you're like, oh, that's actually kind of creepy. And so I super love him. But he is directing a movie called The Life of Chuck, which is actually based on a Stephen King novel called If It Bleeds. And it's supposed to be like, four different little stories that he's created and just thrown into this one book. Um, It has a pretty good list of people that are going to be starring in it, which a lot of the cast that he uses in the TV shows, he kind of like reuses them and like different characters for different seasons. And so it's always super fun for Chris and me to be like, Oh look, it's our favorite. Oh look, Look at who it is. <laughs> but um, the biggest reason that I found out about it is because Chris sent it to me because Matthew Lillard is going to be in it. And I love my man's Matthew Lillard. But also Mark Hamill. You've got Tom Hiddleston. Um, there's a few other people that I definitely recognize because they've all been in like his shows and stuff like that, but he's got a few big name people in there, and I'm really excited to see how this one goes. Cool. Yeah. This looks really awesome. Mm-hmm. Like I just pulled it up, and I'm looking at all the the people who are going to be on it, and yeah, it, it's it's crazy. He- Heather Langenkamp, mm-hmm. Mia Sarah. Um, yeah, it looks it looks really cool. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. But they just recently, like, released just, like, the actors. So I'm very much looking forward to the very first trailer that they put out. And I text one of Chris's buddies because his dad is, like, super obsessed with Stephen King and has read all of his novels and has them all on one big shelf. And I was like, hey, ask your dad if... If It Bleeds is a really good book because I think I'll listen to it on audio before I go and watch the movie whenever it comes out. And so he texts his dad and his dad was like, no, that's a really good book. You should definitely read that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, some good movies coming up that I'm pretty jazzed about. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that looks dope. We'll have, to, we'll have to talk about that whenever it comes out. Yeah. Oh. Alrighty. Are you right. ready to get into it? Yeah, man. I I am ready. I am I am ready to put on my my yellow rollerblades 
um, and be surprisingly way more insightful than I thought I probably should have been, uh, <laughs> than I was expecting to be for this movie. <laughs> I'm going to put on my fake plastic smile and just wave at everyone that ever walks past me and say, hi, Barbie. That's right. So this week is the Barbie movie or just Barbie. Yeah. Uh, it, honestly, when I was trying to look this up, I kept typing in the Barbie movie. And uh, in doing so, I realized it's just called Barbie. Nothing else, because when I typed in a Barbie movie, I got all the terrible CG animated uh, movies that they've done over the years. Hey, so you cannot say that they're terrible CG movies. Some of us grew up watching those, okay? Oh, I'm going to besmirch the hell out of them. <laughs> Rude. Unnecessary. But anyways. So, uh, this was your first time watching it, right, Raven? It was my first time watching it. So, what did you think of Barbie? So, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. I had seen, <laughs> you know, some of the trailers, seen the, like, shots and, like, photos that people had been posting of, like, oh, here's Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie and their cute little matching outfits and stuff like that. I really didn't know too much what the movie was about until, like, you know, a few months afterwards when multiple people had seen it and they would just, like, talk about random things. And so, what was it? The What was uh the name of the house? That... Oh, the... the um... Something oh, Mojo Dojo Casa. Yeah, yeah Ken's Casa Mojo House. Dojo Casa House. Yeah. I would see that everywhere. And I was like, what the heck is this? But I just never got around to watching it. And so it was so interesting to watch this movie with practically nothing for me to have any reference of like, oh, I, I've kind of seen part of this. And like, no. I think anything that I had, like, previously seen on, like, any form of social media was all just, like, the happy preppy Barbie stage in, like, the very beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of interesting jokes that are more adult humor, and so that was kind of fun. I thought that Margot Robbie just killed it as Barbie. I like seeing Barbie have her own mental breakdowns because <laughs> Barbie should be allowed to have mental breakdowns. She's been carrying all that weight on her shoulders for far too long. I am mentally distressed, Barbie. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> as soon as she said that, I was like, yeah, that's probably the Barbie I needed as a kid. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely want to rewatch it because a part of me is like there was a lot to take in that's the truth yeah we can break that down at some point but mark what are your thoughts on the barbie movie i saw this movie with both of my girls in the theater and uh while i while I was watching this movie, I could pinpoint the exact moment it happened. It was the moment where Barbie is sitting on the bus stop. Um, and she's, she's having her little moment and her eyes open up and she's crying and she's looking around. And I'm like, that was the point in the movie when I was like, this movie is way much more thoughtful and deeper than I was expecting it to be. And it's right? brilliant. Right. Um, this was, I was in the midst of all of this goofiness. There's an Oscar worthy performance from Margot Robbie in this movie that seemingly came out of nowhere. Um, I will defend that until the end because if she's not nominated for best actress in a movie, there's something wrong. Um, 
And in the midst of all of this, like a lot, I don't know how much of this went over my kid's head um, because I was with a 14 year old and a nine year old. So Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of it they got. Yeah. But also at the same time as I'm watching this movie, I am already hearing the complaints from the bro dudes um, <laughs> yeah. going, oh, man, it's a Barbie movie, and they're pushing Barbie's feminism. Woke. They're pushing feminism down our throat. I'm like, what? Come on. You know, like. What do you mean she's pushing feminism down your throat yeah. now? Yeah. Barbie's so, been doing that. That's her shtick. Right. It's a Barbie movie. Um, but it was... And then sure enough, like literally two days after I saw it, I saw some article where it's like, is Barbie saying that men are bad or blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it, it basically was like, yep, the, the, this is the backlash I was waiting for. Yep. Um, Ryan Gosling, I feel, gave another Oscar, Oscar-worthy performance. Um, this man was somehow terrible, but not terrible enough to where I was like, ooh, I hate you. Yeah. Uh, I felt like... In his own twisted way, he was kind of like justified in what he did. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it, but I understand where he's coming from. There was, um, it was just this movie was phenomenal, uh, from top to bottom. It was goofy, it was fun, it was thoughtful. Um, there was just so much going on to take in, and uh, yeah, well, as we break it down more. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah. So I guess let's start from the beginning because I want to talk about Lizzo's intro song. Um, that shit's a bop. That was great. I I was walking around for like three days going pink, everything you do. Like, you know, this is obviously before Lizzo got in trouble, but I was going to say, <laughs> did you hear about Lizzo's backlash? And yeah. that's so unfortunate. Considering the fact that, you know, Lizzo was a very big popular name and people really thought that she was something that we ended up finding out she was not. So it's like watching that and hearing Lizzo sing like this song and I'm just like, I feel sad now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed yeah. to be happy. But yeah, no, that beginning little entry of in the Barbie world is so cute and so perfect. And just Barbie's just like, here I am. We're taking a shower. Of course, our little heart shaped waffle is going to pop out right on the plate. And there's a little dollop of whipped cream that lands just beautifully. And she, ah, uh, I love the little closet thing that they did for her where she like just walks in front of her closet. And then the next thing you know, she just changes. You know they She's did a they did a really good job of uh of doing the thing where it's like we know that we are we know that we're dolls and they portrayed that stylistically in such a very clever and kind of unique way where it's like yes no this is how girls or boys or whoever play with dolls where it's like oh look at her she's in the shower when there's no water or look she's drinking but there's not really any juice in the thing you know like they did all that in such a kind of very clever way of like this is the way that kids play with toys and that really i like that they kind of did that and the whole aesthetic of barbie land was so wonderful so vivid, so yes, bright. So bright pink and just yeah. And uh Ken running in I kinda like how they set up Ken from the beginning. He's like Ken only has a good day if Barbie notices him. Oh my goodness. The little like side pieces that they would randomly just pop in there were cracking me up. But that I was like, oh <laughs> uh, Yeah. And poor Ken. Yeah, poor poor Ken. And then he runs out into the ocean, hits the brick wall of an ocean, and comes flying back. And still, at this point, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a goofball movie the whole time. Hooray. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 this first, like, 10, 15 minutes of this movie is 
I don't know. It's perfect. I, I have absolutely no beef with it. Um, and I really like the, the humor when she's at the beach and her feet go flat and she falls down and, you know, she's having this crisis yeah. and there's really this kind of great, this great moment with her friends where they're like, what's wrong? She's like, my feet went flat and she holds her feet up and they just lose their mind. They're like, oh, you know, they're oh like dry even and stuff. So it's good. Just, <laughs> oh, I I really laughed at that part because like Chris just like looks over at me because Chris has like the flattest feet ever, swear to God, and he was like, "Man, that was uncalled for." <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not the patriarchy! Come on, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Arby's gonna teach him a lesson. But yeah, that whole little like scene where it's like. Oh, my girlies are coming to like surround me and try and help me with whatever. And then they're all just like, "Oh my god. What's wrong with you?" <laughs> yeah. You're going to you're going to have to go see Weird Barbie. Sad. Poor Weird Barbie too. I love Weird Barbie so much. Uh She's she's out there. She's definitely like one of those classic dolls that you've like seen every little girl has where they're like, I'm going to give her a haircut yep. and we're going to give her some cool eye makeup. And it's just like, oh, this poor Barbie. And I feel like they couldn't have got anyone better than Kate McKinnon to do it. Yeah, uh, she did so good on it. Which, which is another thing. Boy, did they cast everyone right, right in where they needed to be. Uh, Kate McKinnon was perfect for that. Margot Robbie was perfect. Ryan Gosling was great as we'll just call him Ken prime of just how, how, how do you know that? Like Greta Gerwig, man, she knocked it out of the park, dude. She did. She really did. So let's see. So she goes, see, she goes to see, um, crazy Barbie and, She's like, oh, and then I got this. I got cellulite or uh, a cellulite on oh my, my leg. Oh my goodness! Kills me. Um, and this leads her to on an adventure to the real world, where <laughs> I love that little cutscene of like how they got all to of the, real the world? like different transportation and they like change outfits on each little ride. So cute! It's so like well thought out. And, like, you see little things in the background where it's just, like, a spinning, you know, like a dolphin that has, like, on, like, a circle that has, like, two different dolphins. So it looks like it's constantly, like, jumping out of the water and stuff like that. Mm hmm It felt very, like, genuine to the Barbie feel. It did. Um, it... <laughs> the you're right that was that was such a fantastic scene and we get to revisit it a couple more times and but it does it does very much feel again we haven't really gotten into the part of the movie where it's like things kind of take our super serious turn and <laughs> i'm still like man this is a goofball movie and i'm here for it like this is super fun i don't know where we're gonna go what we're gonna do when we get in the real world uh no, Barbie immediately gets catcalled. That's what happens. Um, poor Barbie. Yeah, poor Barbie. I Where really she feels like that instant like insecurity that so many girls are like, Ugh, now we're in the real world and I'm, I feel uncomfortable in the way that I dressed, even though this makes me feel confident. But now there's weird men looking at me and Ken's like, they were all looking at me, and that was cool. I got so much attention. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked me the time. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that, was, that was so cr uh, Oh, yeah. I, I genuinely, like, again, Margot Robbie knocked out of the park, but you could see the, the like, sheer, um, like, I don't want to say horror might be too strong of a word, but, like, that uncomfortableness. Where she's like, oh, what? Like, I feel gross. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, like, oh, let's go talk to these construction workers. Surely they will help us. And Surely immedi- these lady construction workers will help us. Right. And immediately they're like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, let me get some fries with that shake and all this stare. All right, listen, let me say Man. this because I made a special note about this. Um, granted, I've never been around construction people, um, at least while they're at the job or in any place where, like, you know, there's a bunch of people, like, randomly walking by or through their construction site. But I have never met a dude who will just like cat call a woman and be like hey yo what's up hey let me get some fries with that shake or something at least not in any serious capacity i've met plenty of dudes that talk that trash behind you know behind closed doors and be like oh yeah let me tell you about all this stuff that i do to women and blah, blah 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 um you know trying to talk that big game but i've never met a, but who would do that like, Dude, I see it all the time on, like, social media where people, like, ladies will just, like, video themselves, especially in, like, big cities like New York and, uh, you know, places of, especially, like, where it's, like, higher fashion and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So girls just try and dress, like, however makes them comfortable, but also, like, you know, if you live in, like, New York City, you got to go with the vibe and stuff like that. Uh but, like, they'll post videos where they're just, like, walking down the street and they just record the whole time. And guys will do that. And it's just, like, that's actually insane. That is insane. Yeah. So while you're, like, I've never seen that, it's it's very much, like, a culture that, like, some women definitely have experienced and genuinely hate it's also like a thing where like you can walk past a guy and you're just like uh i can definitely like get bad vibes off of this guy like he would try and say something if i wasn't walking with like my mom or my boyfriend or something you know something like that Mm -hmm. but the fact that like ken is actively like right next to her and they're just like yo what's up girl that's that was crazy Because I feel like most dudes that are going to, like, catcall some girl would just be like, if she's alone, yeah, whatever. What's she going to do? Although, if Ken's dressed the way that Ken is in that scene, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Uh... They probably (laughs) just think he's, like, her gay bestie or something like that. Well, there, well, well, like literally two seconds before that, he was like, "Oh yeah, man!" Like they're staring at me too, and it yeah. was, a, it was a gay couple. Was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> so, so, um, but yeah, that was, uh, I, I felt gross in that scene too, um, you know. But again, it was like in in this part of the movie, there's like for every bad thing that happens, they immediately counteract it with something fun and goofy because it's like we get that scene and we're like Ew. And it's like oh well, well you know it's because you're dressed different so let's go this and then they get the clothes and they're wearing something equally as goofy and then they get arrested and it's like ha ha yuck 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 and then something else happens and then they get arrested again it's like ha 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 yuck 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 you know <laughs> look at how crazy this is uh and then we get to th- for me the most confusing part of this whole movie the most confusing aspect is the mattel office and it's confusing because this feels like a completely different movie than the rest of the movie like the mattel executive said you need to have something like what if we got will ferrell in here to do something goofy and greta gerwig was like I don't think that's going to work. And they're like, no, you don't understand what we're saying. Get Will Ferrell in here to do something funny as a Mattel executive. We can take the joke because that whole Mattel executive thing really felt kind of out of place. It did feel a little weird. I'm, I was trying to like figure out how it was supposed to like really work. Cause it almost felt like, the people that worked for Mattel were supposed to be very much of the like Barbie-esque lifestyle where it's like they could have come from Barbie land somehow and then kind of turned human but like kept the weird 
overly bubbly, positive outtake of Barbie Land. That's that's like the vibe that I got from it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when they're like running around trying to catch Barbie in like the little cubicle scene. Yeah, and they're like, it just felt very. If it was Scooby you know, Dooish. Yeah, it did feel Scooby Dooish. And it just, I mean, it just didn't feel like it belonged in this particular movie. Yeah. Although, like, Barbie was doing, like, the whole big dance scene with her girls, and then the kins would come in. So it's just, like, it kind of feels like it fits, but you realize that it's supposed to be in the real world. So I think that's what, like, really throws it off is because it's, like, but you guys are in the real world, so what's going on here? I thought it was interesting, though. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting take to go for it. Yeah, and and then when they're trying, I don't know, I, I felt like they could have played a little bit different. And then that's when we're introduced to, uh, at the same time all this is going on, like Barbie meets, what's her name, Sasha, I think, is is the, yeah. Yeah. Um, the little girl she thinks she's supposed to be after, and this girl is just mean as shit. <laughs> um, like, I get it, she's supposed to be, like, portrayed as this angsty teenager, but, man, she is just straight up rude. Um, <laughs> because this, you know, Barbie was really nice. It was like, oh, hey, how's it going? And, again, like, I get it, kids are mean, but, man, I don't know if I'm lucky because I don't know any of my my 14-year-old's friends that would act this way. This girl was just mean as shit, and I felt bad for Margot Robbie. And no one wants to feel bad for Margot Robbie. She's too sweet. <laughs> and at the same time, Ken learns about the patriarchy, which oh is God. a fantastic scene where he's go running around trying to get jobs. Um, he's just like, hey, can I be a doctor? He's like, do you have a, do you have an MD? He's like, nope. You know, he's like, let me talk to a doctor. He's like, you're talking to one. Uh, just, you know. Give me a clicky pen. Give me a coat. Give me a coffee. <laughs> right. Just like, dang. Right. Walks into that, like, one office and is like, I thought that we were supposed to be higher than women. And the dude's like, yeah, we're just keeping it under a better wrap right now. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> uh, when he goes to the beach. And he's like, oh, yeah. You know, he's like, nope, I am qualified to stand right here in this spot. He's like, well, what if someone's in trouble? He's like, there, I'm no help to him. Uh, <laughs> I can't even beach here. My job is beach. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then we meet um, America Ferreira, who we find out is now, you know, the, the, the person – that brought Barbie in there um, after the chase. We go then go on a car chase, which again feels kind of weird and out of place and like a car commercial. Um, <laughs> you can definitely tell that that Chevy Motor Vehicles donated cars or you know got got the licensing to to put their move cars in the movie because uh, yeah. being driving the new GMC and she pushes the button and the screen does the thing like oh look how fast we're going. Uh, it, no. was, it, it was a car commercial for a few minutes. Um, and then we go to Barbie land with the family and uh, we get there and everything's all canned up. The patriarchy has taken over. Uh, the, 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 the Barbies are serving the kids brewski beers. Um, uh, and John's, they are loving it. They are they loving are- it. Loving not having to be doctors and, you know. And John Cena shows up as a mermaid. Oh my God. That was wild. <laughs> I like John Cena as a mermaid. Did a good you, time. Did you hear, uh, uh, do you know the story about how John Cena became a mermaid? No. Um, they were filming this in London. And it just so happened that John Cena and Margot Robbie were at a restaurant unbeknownst to each other. And John Cena saw Margot Robbie and her group there and paid for their meal. And Margot Robbie went up to John Cena after they got done eating and said, Hey, we're filming right down the street. Do you want to come in, come in for a day and be a mermaid? 
And he was like, yes, because he's John Cena. Of course he does. He's down for anything, it seems like. So that's how it happened. At least that's the story that I read somewhere that I can't source. Well, that's uh, fun. Yeah. I'm glad that they're friends like that. Yeah. That me- that, that is like, okay, cool. Oh, okay. So, um, and then we have like this, this great kind of, oh man, Ken speech where he's just kind of laying out like what he's done and why he's done it. Like his villain speech, if you will, uh, from his Mojo Dojo Casa house. <laughs> um, and I really like how the girls call him. I'm like, you don't have to call it. You said house three times. You don't have to call it a Dojo <laughs> Casa house. Cause, um, and he's like, not call it Mojo Dojo Casa house. I'm like, that's such a man response. That is such a dude response to all of this. I get it. Uh, <laughs> um, and they kind of, they kind of throw Barbie's previous actions back in her face. And that's kind of the point where you see in kind of Ken's eyes where he's like, I don't want to do this, but you've kind of forced me to do this because all I wanted was a little attention. Yeah. You know, like all you had to do was just treat me like I was somebody. And like, so sad to like, think about, but then also you're like, but now Ken's being a dick. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Oh, Oh, so, so where, what are we going to do? We got to go back and see crazy Barbie. What, what was her name? It's not crazy Barbie. What was it? Weird Barbie. Thank you. Yeah. Because. Yeah. And then you find out that the mom has been playing with the Barbies and that, that felt very like, I almost wanted like more of, of a backstory as to why she was just like, I'm just going to start playing with these Barbies. Was she trying to, like, act out, like, her own emotions and stuff like that? Well, I don't know if it was if it was so much of a, like, the way a kid would, would play with Barbies. You know, I'm sure it's probably one of those things where I'm not going to get rid of this because this is, this is a physical yeah. thing that attaches me to like good times I had with my kid. And I'm sure that she was probably just, you know, sitting there probably drinking her coffee one morning and was just like, Oh look, I'm Barbie, but Oh, what's this Barbie? Oh no, I got cellulite. Cause I'm over, you know, cause I'm over 35 or whatever now, you know? And then that's probably what it was. I don't think it was like playing in the traditional sense of, you know, and here she is in her dream house and all of this, like the way a kid would do it. That's fair. No. Yeah. It was it was definitely a I think a really nice touch to be like to help show why she was kinda like starting to feel insecure of things. I almost wanted more of it than her just being like I'm sad and depressed. <laughs> I w- it's not like, oh, I wish my daughter would, you know, hang out with me or my spouse and I are having weird issues in our marriage. It just felt very much like, okay, I'm going to start playing with Barbies. Yeah. Or like, you know, chatting up her Barbie is just to be like, remember? <laughs> you know when you like take an object and you look at it and you like kind of mimic like someone like talking to you and you're like, Oh, do you remember the good times? And you're like, yes, Barbie, of course I do. <laughs> when my daughter loved me and everything was great, yeah, now we're sad and depressed. <laughs> like, something like that. Yeah. That's most likely what I would think would happen with it. Yeah, and I think also at this point in the movie, I think we have we have to make sacrifices story-wise at this point in the movie because now we have... The CEO coming to Barbie land, we have the the mom and the daughter and the mom basically, you know, for all intents and purposes, kind of having a midlife crisis. Um, and Barbie's losing her kind of grasp on Barbie land and Ken is, 
you know, taken over and we kind of got their looming deadline of the Supreme Court in Barbie land, you know, yeah. getting ready to vote. Like there's a lot of kind of moving cogs. And I think that they were like, we don't need to kind of get into another backstory with the mom and like, you know, because they kind of sum all of that up where she gives like her big kind of rousing speech that snaps the one Barbie out of it where she's like, you know, as a, as a woman, you're expected to be this, but also this and this and also this and blah, 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 blah. Um, and let me just say from a man's perspective, I get it. I know I like, I know what she's talking about and where she's coming from and all of that. Um, I thought that was a great kind of, I thought that was a great speech. I may be mistaken again, because I'm a man. Um, I thought that was a very kind of pointed, pointed, but not too over the top, uh, very kind of concise of like what is placed on women nowadays. Yeah. Raven, your perspective, please go. (laughs) (laughs) No, Mark, it's all you. You you get all the perspective you want. (laughs) Uh, yeah. No, you see, think... what it is, is the way uh, that women feel. No. <laughs> <laughs> the way that these women feel nowadays. Right. Uh, yeah. No, it was definitely, like, a good thing for her to, like, point all that stuff out. Because that is so much of, like, what Barbie was supposed to do. She was supposed to be perfect. She was supposed to be able to do anything. She could solve any problem. And that's just kind of how a lot of women's standards have been it's like you're supposed to be pretty you're supposed to be this you're supposed to be perfect and never have any bad days everything's always great stuff like that and so for her to just be like that's not how it is in the real world and even though here in barbie land you guys always have you know pretty much a great time the rest of us just kind of struggle along in the real world Stuff like that, so. Yeah. So then when, like, that Barbie snaps out of it, it's just like, all right, good. Homegirl homegirl understood what I was saying, because she probably, all the Barbies probably felt that. That's why they were like, oh, yeah, no. I don't want to just be a server of brewskis to all these kids and stuff. (laughs) They're like, we want to better ourselves, and we want to. You know, do all that stuff. Which, also, when Barbie first meets Sasha, and she's like, she calls her like a fascist and stuff, and Barbie's like, all we ever tried to do was good for the world, and it's like, yeah, like I see it, that you want girls to be like, feel empowered and stuff like that, but that's not the real world, unfortunately. You know. Well, all right. So then from there, we we start snapping Barbies out, and I want to I want to say, I kind of take a little bit of umbrage with how they distracted the Kins. Uh, so good. <laughs> so good. I've never seen The Godfather before. Like, what do you mean you've never seen The Godfather before? I want uh, you to start it over and just talk through it the whole time. <laughs> that cracked uh, me up. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, I don't know how Photoshop works. That's the one that would have got me. I would be like, oh, oh there's layers. Do you not know what? Hold on a second. Let me show you how to do this. Oh my god. Yeah, that would have been that. That's the one that would have been me. The uh, classic <laughs> mansplaining. <laughs> a woman in distress. Let me tell her everything I know about this. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> works. Works every time. I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. It. It, it works 100 percent of the time. Um. Yeah, they kind of nailed that one. <laughs> um, and then probably the most egregious one where they get the kids to turn on each other, where they have him singing that same that same song. Uh, um, oh, what the hell is it? Uh, the 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 I want to push you around. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Uh, by Matchbox Twenty, mm-hmm. and. Then they all switch, and I've watched something like this play out in real life, where all the guys are doing the same thing, and the girls kind of have it 
you know, where they're just like not into it and then they'll go do something else or they'll go talk to someone else. And I've watched guys just slowly but surely just like melt down because they're not getting the attention that they thought that they were, you know, supposed to get. Yeah. This is, this is a, a, a obviously a cartoon version of it, but it is a hundred percent based in reality. Um, yeah, th- this is, th- this was kind of funny. Uh, and I'm trying to think, is this the part where we get, where we get the, I'm just Ken, where, where we get the, uh, 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 the Kennergy song. It's not, it can't be long after this. Yeah. It's like right after, because that's when, um, don't they sing it like after Barbie's like, we, I'm sorry that I like was, you know, not the greatest to you. And then it's like, but I'm Barbie. And this is where you get to find out who Ken is. Ken doesn't have to just be beach or Barbie's boyfriend or this and that you get to be you and go figure out who you want to be. And that's when Ken is like, Oh, I'm Ken. (laughs) I think that's when it happens. Okay. Um, I just want to say that if I've said this since this movie debuted, that if Ryan Gosling and uh, Simu Liu are not at the Oscars performing I'm Just Ken for best (laughs) song and there's not like 50 other men up there on stage dressed as Ken singing and dancing with them, then we have failed society. Uh, because there was never, or th- th- there's never been a more perfect opportunity to genuinely make the Oscars fun again than to have Ryan Gosling come out there and sing this song, and then surprise guest Simu Liu comes out, and then like all the other kids just kind of show up and just start dancing and having a good time. Can you feel the energy? Um, That'd be fun. It would be super black. And uh, I I told the kids as soon as I saw it, I said, you know what? I want to, I am, a, I am Kenuf uh, a shirt. Those are so good. <laughs> I see the stickers so... like on people's car quite a bit. And I'm always like, nice. Now that I like fully get the reference to it, I'm like, okay, you do you. And it's so it's it's like the perfect amount of cornball after we've had this great scene of like feminism and girl power and all this other kind of stuff. And the movie, the movie is kind of heavy, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, Ken, you know, like I like you, but not like that. And we just need to kind of move on. And, you know, where do we go from here? And we get this kind of cornball moment. And then Will Ferrell shows back up, and you're like, what are we doing, Will Ferrell? And then Rhea Perlman shows up. And, like, we had her earlier in the movie. This part just, this part didn't make any sense to me at all. At all. Like, I get what they were trying to do, but what are we doing? <laughs> you know? Uh, what what do you feel about Rhea Perlman playing the creator of Barbie and coming to kind of give us a history lesson on the Barbies. That first little scene that we see her, Chris was like, I feel like there's a reference to this, but I'm not like fully getting it. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be the creator of Barbie. Just like trying to like remind her that it's like, uh, I put this, it's like, you know, there's so many like stereotypes for women and what they're supposed to be and stuff like that. And she was just trying to remind her like the reason that she created Barbie and stuff like that. But it was interesting to see that last little bit where, you know, all the colors kept like changing, like these different shades of like pink and peach and white like all over the place but then Ruth is like just so you, uh 
Just so you know, if you decide that you want to become human, it's it's not something to be taken lightly. But I do like that little bit where Barbie like first takes her like real first breath. That was very interesting to like be like, oh, so Barbie's just deciding to leave Barbie behind. And she's deciding to do her own thing because that's what Barbie's supposed to do. Is Barbie supposed to be anything that she wants to be? Something like that. I don't know. It was kind of weird, but it was kind of sweet. I don't know. Yeah, the the kind of uh, montage that we get, I wasn't quite sure... I wasn't quite sure like what we were kind of going for with the montage. You know, it showed all these people and I just whatever kind of message they were trying to get across like it just it wasn't landing with me. Like is she supposed to I I guess it was just supposed to be like you know, do it for all like become human for all of the girls of the world and and yeah. all, and it was just it just kind of fell flat. Um but but when she, you're right, when she does kind of breathe that first breath, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, all right, rock and roll. And then we get this great kind of, <laughs> the great last line of the movie. Uh, <laughs> Goodness. I'm here Hi, to see. Hi, what's your name? And then she says it, whatever the last name, comma, Barbara. Okay. I'm here for my gynecologist appointment. <laughs> Is and that then, what it, is that yeah, how she said it? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then everyone laughed and then we were off to, and then, you know, it was ha 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 and credits. <laughs> um, and again, I watched this whole movie and that part and the, at the beginning when it was just like, Oh, you want, you want to beach off or you want, you want me to beat you off right now or something. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking over at my kids going, Oh man, I don't know how this is going to land. I genuinely like I'm begging and pleading with whoever, like, please do not let my nine year old go to school and be like, Oh yeah, well I'm going to beat you off because I was the, that's a that's a, a phone call I don't want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that's um, fair. Uh, I think Alice has enough. Yeah, she just she's, know it all to be like, all right, I see what's happening here. Yeah, um, but I get it that she'd be like, oh no, Amy. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, all in all, man, th- this movie this movie was great. I really enjoyed it. I really think out of inexplicably out of all the movies that I think we've seen this year, this, at least with Margot Robbie, I think this might be an Oscar worthy movie for Margot Robbie, man. I think she, she knocked it out of the park so hard. I don't know what this, I think, uh, she definitely should get an Oscar for that. She played Barbie so perfectly. Even when Barbie's, like, crying, she still just looks so, like, pretty and stuff. Which which is is something that, you know, I want to to mention that one line where Helen Mirren, the the narrator, says, we understand that if you're going to, you know, if Barbie's going to feel ugly, Margot Robbie is probably not the person to say it. Uh, Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. She was she was gorgeous in this movie from from Goodness. the beginning to the end. Um, but yeah, it, this was I was not walking into this movie expecting what I saw, and I'm very pleasantly surprised that I saw it. Yeah. So, for Sheezy. You know, I can always tell when we have a movie that we like because we really break it down. <laughs> True. Yeah. I think it was this. And, uh, now, what was the one movie that we just lambasted for like an hour? And we're like, oh. how in the world are we talking this long? Was it, was it Gremlins or Teen Wolf? It was one of those two. I think it might have been no. Gremlins where we no, like. No, no, no. It was the Wes Anderson movie. 
that we just oh, like, talked uh, mad the, shit on. The the French Dispatch. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Uh, and now I can't uh, even. I see that he's got two new movies out, and I see the trailers for him. Like I'm not watching that. That looks too much like the French Dispatch. <laughs> I think I've seen the trailer for one of them. I do actually like his movies. That one just was a miss for me, which makes me so sad. So I'll watch maybe one of them. I, I didn't know that he's put out two since then. So Well, he did Asteroid, and then I think there's another oh, one yeah. he did on Net, or this, like I'm not going to watch that one, to be honest, because my aunt and uncle and my grandparents went to see it and they were like we don't understand what happened in the movie and i was like well explain to me about the movie and they're like yeah we don't really know how to i was like uh okay (laughs) so i think it might actually be another one like the french dispatch oops but oh well that's why we do this little silly thing, so we can see different movies and yep. chat about the silly goose things that we like. Oh, all right. You ready? You got anything else? Are you ready to move on? Let's move along. All right. Favorite part of the week. I say it every week because it is my absolute favorite part of the week. Uh. I enjoy talking about, regardless of how bad our week weeks have been, this gives us a chance to look back and reflect and be a little bit thankful for the little rays of sunshine we get, no matter how small. Raven, please tell me what has made you happy this week. So, on the 30th, 31st? Whichever was the first day of the week last uh, last week. Okay, that's what I thought. We started a new hire to start grooming with us um, as our third full-time groomer. And so that was very exciting just in the fact of, like, we have been getting slammed. We have had so many people try and request uh, I've recently just done some clients where they were like, yeah, we've been on your books for like, just to see you for like two and a half months. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so this new groomer, she's been grooming for about eight years. So she has a lot of like experience and stuff. And it was like very nice to see where she is coming from my aunt boss lady (laughs) uh had her do some ride-alongs with her for a few days and then she did a ride-along with me and then did two more days with the other groomer but i really like her i think she is going to be great to our team which is something that my aunt really wanted because she's like I really like our team I feel like we're very low maintenance no drama that type of stuff she's like I just don't want to bring someone in and be worried of anything but no we all collectively really like her and I'm very excited for us to continue to expand there's even talk about having someone come part-time but my aunt's like, I can't train two people at one time. And it, it takes a hot minute to really learn everything to do mobile grooming. Because she was like, I've been doing this for eight years. But now I have to like figure out how to really construct myself to be able to do everything. Because you're so used to like in a salon having so much space and being able to walk all around the dog and stuff like that. And I was like, trust me, it feels stressful and you might think that you made the worst mistake ever but after a few months it's literally just smooth sailing so that is what i am very happy for this past week that is awesome yeah we're all super jazzed about it because now we've got all four of our 
grooming vans parked in one area, which we've never had to do, which means my aunt will also have to buy a fifth van. So that's interesting. Hooray. Yeah. Expand it's that fast. business. It's grown fast, that's for sure. Mark, tell these lovely people what has made you so happy this week. So I have two things again this week. Uh, the first thing I kind of touched on a little bit earlier was the, uh, dressing up at work for Halloween. We had a really good time throughout the day cause we had decorated our cube and me and another guy in my cube had dressed up. And plus some of our other friends that we work with were all dressed up and, and it was very fun. The funnest part of the day that wasn't meant to necessarily be fun, but the people who came in made it fun was, um, the people were coming around for the cube decoration contest and costume contest. And these are like our bosses, bosses, bosses. Okay. So oh. these, so these are like, you know, the good, like show of, um, support and fun. Look at us. We're fun guys coming on down here to look at everyone's costumes type of thing. Right. And, because I'm obviously not wearing my Mandalorian helmet all day long and my suit jacket all day long uh, because the thing's hot. They come in, you know, we knew they were coming in sometime after 1030 and we're still working. So I just get off a, 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 a telecon on my computer. I take my headset off and we're kind of talking and they walk in and I'm like, Oh snap. So I stand up, I put my suit on and they're looking around and they're chit chatting or whatever. And they see the guy who's sitting, the other guy who's dressed up in my cube and he's, he's a black guy. And he went out and bought like an Afro and got like some like seventies, you know, funky seventies glasses and he's wearing like kind of a loud shirt and he's got a pick in the back of his head. And, um, and I hear this out of the corner, out, out of, you know, kind of out of the corner of my ear as I'm getting dressed and throwing my helmet on, uh, like, Oh, look at this. It's Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> I was like, what? Bro. Jimi <laughs> Hendrix. Like, okay. And, uh, and my buddy's just like, yeah, I, I guess, sure, sir, whatever you say. And at this point, like, I have my my helmet on and my suit jacket on, and the guy turns around and sees me, and he's like, "Oh, look, it's a um, uh, star, star, star war guy." Wow. And um. Another guy in the cube was like Mandalorian. He's like, yes, yes, a Mandalorian, like like a literal alien who had just heard words. He's like, yes, that's a thing. That's the ticket. Um, oh. So they walk out like this guy literally just did not know what to make of me, and he walks out that kind of confused, you know, kind of duck trot. Where people are yeah. just like, I have to get out of this situation because I'm clearly just out of my depth of knowledge. Uh, this man clearly had never seen a Star War in his life. And the second this man turned around and left our cube, they were like, oh, the Star Wars guy. <laughs> and immediately, everyone started calling me Star Wars guy. I was like, "Oh shit, this is going to be on my damn retirement plaque. I have yep. to do so I have to do something embarrassing quickly uh so they forget about this. I don't know what I can do that's going to top this. This is wild." <laughs> so, yeah, every day I've been in the cube now, um they've <laughs> they've called me, "Oh, hey, Star Wars guy." I'm like, "Be quiet, Jimi Hendrix." <laughs> Dang. So, um but our one buddy who did uh, who did win a costume contest, he dressed up like Joe Dirt. And to be fair, my man looks like Joe Dirt. So, yeah, he did actually win. Uh, oh, so, nice. second thing, went and saw a play um, for Alice this weekend. Good night, baby girl. I love you. Um, that was Amy, everybody. <laughs> um, I went and saw Alice's uh, high school production of Fiddler on the Roof. And I've been to a lot of plays over the years for this child, uh, both where she's been in the foreground and in the background. And 
you know, she's a freshman in high school. And uh, so she hasn't worked her way up in high school to like be a star of a show yet. But this show was fantastic. I'm super proud of her. I'm super proud of these kids. They did so good. It was so much fun. I went and saw it Thursday morning when they went and did it for a competition. And then I saw it again Saturday, and I'm genuinely not upset that I saw it twice. Which is probably the highest praise I can give a high school musical production. uh, (laughs) That I've seen it twice in four days and not upset that I saw it twice. Great show. Um, Yeah. And it was just fun, man, watching watching my kid do something that she enjoys. So, dope. Aw, that's sweet. So, and I have one more story. I don't I don't know if this qualifies as like makes me happy, but I felt I feel like I I'm obligated to tell this story. I love. So, here we go. Thursday, I was in the grocery store. There was this girl who's checking me out. She had to have been like. 20 years old okay and the guy who was bagging the groceries was probably like between 16 and 18 like he was had to have just gotten off of school to come bag groceries at grocery store and the lady who's ringing me up she's saying oh yeah back in the day and i'm like oh shit here we go what type of nonsense are you about to say uh, you know, what's back in the day for you, 2006, ha, ha, ha. This is what I'm thinking. And she goes, no, back in back in the day, you used to just be able to go to the store and put stuff on a tab. You could just go in there and be like, oh, yeah, I don't have to pay you now. It's just an IOU. Like, I have an account at the store. You know, you send what? a kid to the store, and they could buy stuff for you. You know, if you gave them a note, and be like, oh, yeah, put this on the tab. And And she's not completely wrong. Okay, because like there has been times when I was a kid where my mom was friends with the lady who ran the gas station across the street. And she'd be like, run over there, give me a pack of cigarettes. And I'd run over there and get my mom a pack of cigarettes because the lady knew who I was. So I would do that. Um, And yeah, it was a different time. Like, you know, we're talking like mid 80s. So and then while this lady or this lady while this girl is saying this she looks over at me and she goes isn't that right sir and i go <laughs> and i go <laughs> i kind of laugh a little bit like yeah you're right i was like you're not completely wrong and the bag boy came to my defense a little bit he goes man he's like hold on a second why do you just assume that he's old enough to to know like that that was a thing like how you how you just gonna assume his age? And I'm looking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you doing saying that? And she said this. She said these words. Raven. Oh no. Raven. Oh no. She goes. She goes. Well, I mean, he looks like he's got some wisdom on him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? I I, I kind of chuckled a little bit, and I oh. look at it and I said, that's the nicest way anyone's ever called me old. Like, give me my stuff. I got to go outside and, like, hobble back to the thing. And, like, you know, my back was hurting. Knees are hurting. Like, you know. You're like, I got to go sit in my car and I just, uh, cry yeah, for a second. I left the parking lot with, like, this blank look on my face. Like, he's got <laughs> wisdom on him. What the hell does that even mean? I got wisdom on me. So. It has nothing to do with, you know, this process of graying that might be. Right. A little visible on you. Right. If she just would have been like, dog, gray hair, balding, I would have been like, you know what? You clocked me absolutely right. 100%. You know? She was like, he's got some wisdom on him. I'm like, oh, man, shit, I'm a and d character now. Hey, there you go. You know, that's that's your next uh, <laughs> yes. D&D character to make. Just the highest wisdom stat. Whatever that means. I'm just going to be an old man who just dispenses energy. Like, back in my day. Oh man, that'd be good. So yeah, that was that was super fun. It's it's done and now it's done turned into like um it's done turned into a great story. <laughs> so all right. Um uh Raven, tell everybody where they can find you. See, my wisdom is leaving me now. Uh tell everybody where they can find find you on the social medias. That wisdom brain, you know. Yeah, that wisdom brain. 
Wisdom, uh, not intelligence. Man. You guys can find me over on ye old Twitter at super underscore. Wait. What is it? Spooky what? underscore Raven. Jeez Louise. Man. Somebody needs a nappy nap. Uh, I also hang out sometimes on Instagram at that. So Raven Ellis. You can also find our little Silly Goose podcast on whatever social media you feel like looking for it at Nerd for No Reason. Hooray! Who would have guessed? Mark, where are you located? I am at all the social medias at Turtles Do It. Um, except for... Yeah, except for TikTok. I think I am Battlecat with a K478 uh, on TikTok. So I post some videos there of my 3D printing, um, trying trying to get that cool sponsorship deal to get some free filament. Hey. So that's what I'm hoping for. So, yeah. Yeah. Posting yeah, videos. Speaking of which, been posting some videos on the old TikTok. Y'all go check them out. Um we're just talking about things. Talking about things. That's all. That's all we're doing. Doing the thing. Yeah. And while you guys are on ye old internets, go uh, to wherever you listen to this lovely little podcast. Like, rate, review, subscribe. Do all the silly things. We love you. We would appreciate you if you did all those. Tell us, Tell us all the feedback. Anything you got to say. Tell us movies that you would like us to watch. Just do it. Just Nike do it. <laughs> Just Nike do it. That way you can't say that I, you know, did some weird copyright thing. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone, thanks for listening. Y'all go and do something wonderful in the world today guys go and just some super cool medias and we'll see you again here next week on the nerd for no reason podcast goodbye bye barbie bye barbie